stick on Trump has been called. It's the stick of Mark. Marty McSorley. Welcome to Marty's Illegal Stick, a hockey history podcast with your host, Scott Kinville. Let's hop on that Zamboni time machine and go back in time to look at hockey's glorious history. And what's up, hockey fans, and welcome to episode number 93 of Marty's Illegal Stick, a hockey history podcast brought to you by the Sports History Network. You know, we've been doing this best of the best series for a few, well, geez, a couple months now. And, you know, every week it just seems to get more and more fun. You know, two weeks ago we did the the Quebec Nordiques, or no, I'm sorry, we did the Hartford Whalers and the the Carolina Hurricanes. And then we did, uh, let's see, the Quebec Nordiques and the Colorado Avalanche last, last week. So this week... We're going to move on to the Detroit Red Wings. Now, believe it or not, I was looking at this earlier. The Red Wings have been around for 96 seasons. When I tell you that, I had a uh, – like, I started this my list at noon when I woke up, and I just – I went down a rabbit hole of Red Wings. Yeah, yeah. Like, it was hard. This was actually a very difficult list because there were so many names to put on here. And I didn't know where to put some of them were obvious, like there right, were some obvious right. ones, but like yeah. there were like there were some other ones that we're gonna get into that just made this so difficult. And just names I've never heard of, and I've read I started researching like, oh, this guy was wicked good. And yeah. he played in like 1942. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And that's what makes it so difficult with a team that's been around for almost a hundred years. Yeah, especially like a team that let's face it, neither of us are truly a fan of. Like, I mean, the Bruins one was obvious for me. Like, I right, right, you know, and yeah. the Kings one was obvious for you, probably. Well, we haven't done a Kings one yet, so that's oh, gonna be interesting. Uh, yeah. You know what? I I'm gonna I can't wait to do that one. I'm gonna butcher it to piss you off. I know you will. I just <laughs> I know. I, I, I'm already I prepared myself for that. Already. <laughs> But yeah, I mean that it's true though. I mean when you when you go through and you and I basically both grew up in the same era, right? Yeah, that nineties, seventies, eighties, nineties, that whole time. So we didn't. Whoa, get whoa, to... whoa! I did not grow up in that era. I am far about me. younger than you, Grandpa. Okay, well I grew up. <laughs> all right, then fine. You want to jump off the train? Then fine. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I mean just for the, the sake of argument, we basically grew up in the same let's say thirty era or thirty year era. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Obviously, up to now. So we don't know. Of, I mean, we know of the teams from the '60s, the '50s, the '40s, '30s, and all that, but we really didn't see them play. Yeah, so you, you just heard the stories. Like it's so difficult when you are trying to compare players that you've never even really seen play to yeah. players you grew up watching. Oh yeah, like let's face it. Like you know, it's hard to compare Ted Lindsay to uh, Sergey Fedorov for me. Sure. Yeah. I never absolutely. watched Ted Lindsay, but I grew up with Fedorov. Right. Right. Exactly. Exactly. So without further ado, why don't we give this a shot? So if you've been following along with this show, we've been doing this best of the best. This is how we do it. We break it down into a first team all-star team, a second team all-star team. These are all time players, by the way, position by position, including coaches. And of course, we have our honorable mentions, because especially with a team like the Detroit Red Wings, there are just too many players out there that you got to you got to be able to mention some somehow, some way. So. Ed, I'll tell you what, we're going to start with you with your Detroit Red Wings honorable mention all-time team. Yes. So I have a lot. I actually yeah, have quite a, quite a few. Um, I'm going to start I, it off. You know what? My pen ran out of ink. I had to get another one. Yeah, it was. I, I had to type it out. My, I got carpal tunnel. <laughs> well, I hope you got insurance because we're not covering it for I'll, you. I'll blame, I'll blame it on my job. It probably <laughs> came from that anyways. Um, but yeah, I'm going to start this off with Darren McCarty. Okay. I mean, just, I mean, uh, he's, he's never going to go down in the annals of history of all time great or anything like that, but he was very meaningful to that late nineties, early two thousands Red Wings team. And sure. he was like, and I've heard him described as the lifeblood, the, the heart of the team where like, sure. He may not put up the points, but he rallied that team. I mean, just look at the history of the the Red Wings avalanche rivalry right. and he was in the front lines he he wanted he wanted claude lemieux's blood and he got it and it's just it it, it kind of he was kind of just an overall just locker room guy i mean yeah, absolutely awful hair great in the locker room did you see that show on espn when they had him and, and claude lemieux sitting down together he, he looked like an eraser tip <laughs> 
<laughs> his hair was awful. But I, I, you know what? He's he's one of my favorites and one of the best uh, to me. One of the best to ever put on the Red Wing, the, the spoked wheel. Um, my next one's Chris Draper. Okay, um, just Good. overall, well, like the the late '90s Red Wings was just such a wagon. I mean, it's. There was, there's no bad person to put on this honorable mentions list that were on those teams. Sure, sure. Um, my next one, and this one is... Oh, they got Draper for a dollar, too, in a week. Yeah, they got Draper for a dollar. There goes the camera. I yeah, like your camera just hit the ground. <laughs> yeah, it did. It hit the keyboard. <laughs> All right, who's your next one? My next one is Bob Probert. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah, Mr. All Star himself, Bob Probert, <laughs> uh, biggest knuckles the league's ever seen, meanest son of a bitch I've ever heard of. I mean, he, he, I, when I think of Bob Probert, I think of the Red Wings. I don't think of his time in Chicago or any other. Uh, I don't even right. know who else he played for. I think it was only Chicago and Detroit. That was, that was it. And I, I think of him more as a Red Wing than a Blackhawk. Yeah, oh, well, you have to. There's, there's no if and or's or buts about that. Yeah, he's just he, he's a Red Wing. Like the Blackhawks thing was kind of like the end of his career kind of deal. Yeah, like he his time yeah. was up, and you know probably wanted to go somewhere different. Um, my next was Igor Larionov, and he literally only got honorable mention because I think there were other better defensemen. Well, he was a centerman actually. Oh yeah, better centerman. There, yeah, he he literally would be top. Uh, Oh, yeah, I was thinking of Konstantinov. Right. Um, but, yeah, Larionov, the only reason why he's an honorable mention because he would be on a uh, top two line on this series on almost every other team. Sure. Did you ever hear, uh, did you ever hear how uh, Slava Fatisov says his name in that of Miracles and Men? No. It's so funny because he's talking about, because they were part of the, you know, the, the new Russian Five. And he called, yes, Igor was a professor. He was hockey professor. He was like a little nerd. (laughs) (laughs) So anyways, that notwithstanding. And my next one's Konstantinov. Um, And I believe he was, wasn't he the one that ended up paralyzed? Yes, after the 97 uh, Cup win. After the 97 Cup win due to a uh, horrible, horrible drunk driving accident. Yep. Um, that he was not behind the wheel for. He was in a limo. Yeah. Um, and he probably would be top two, maybe top three defensemen in Red Wings history if that didn't happen. Ooh, boy, that's that's a bold statement right there, my friend. I, I don't think it is. I really don't think it is. Like it, it, The Red Wings had like – they, they breed offensemen. They used to win games by outscoring, not by out defending. Yeah. And they – and history's shown that. I mean, look at the names that they have for offense. There are too many to count, but you look at defensemen, like you're like, oh, okay, they're a little lackluster here, but they didn't need it. Yeah. Well, mm-hmm. that's there's a lot of truth to that. There is. I mean, but I'll tell you, you're right. Konstantinov is one of those guys that could you imagine just what could have been? You're, you're right on that. I mean, we'll never know, of course, not unfortunately, but yeah. Man. And honestly, like it's it, it, that's one of those heartbreaking hockey stories. It is. Like it is. It's, you, you see, uh, like you hear about the Derek Bugards and the Rick Rippins, and you have to throw Vladimir Konstantinov on that list. Sure. Of just absolute, just what could have been. Sure. But my next one, again, maybe controversial to leave him uh, just on honorable mentions, but I don't think he really had that long of a time in Detroit to really make an impact. Mike Vernon. Hmm. Yeah, he wasn't there that long. I think he was there maybe three seasons, but three or four. But he gets him. But he gets him a cup. He got cup stock. Yeah. Well, that's even though I will always think of Mike Vernon as a Calgary Flame. See, I always think of him as a Red Wing because of that Patrick Law fight. I know, I know, but just for me, especially growing up in the '80s, being an Oilers fan when I was a kid. You were Mike an Oilers Vernon fan when you were a like, kid. When I was a kid, then Gretzky got traded to LA, and that's when I went to LA. Oh, so you were just a Gretzky fan. Oh, Gretzky was my idol, dude. Okay. Idol. I respect that. I oh, respect yeah. that. Ray Bork was my idol. And uh, when I was a kid, it was like I, when he went to Colorado, I, I watched nothing but Avalanche games that year. Right. Well, that was that was at the end of his career, too. Gretzky yeah. was in his prime. 
I know that was nuts. I still can't believe that. That was the dumbest trade in hockey history. <laughs> uh, um, my look, next one, Dominic Hashik. You know, that's that's an interesting name because I was actually thinking about him too. I was I didn't realize he wasn't there that long. He was there for like maybe three seasons. But the impact he had was unbelievable. He got a cop. He yeah, got two. I think he got two there. No, he was he was the O two. He won it in O two. I think he wanted an 08 also. Was he was he still with him? I I'm I'm Google I'm looking this up right now. I think Osgood came back for that one to be honest. Yep. Dominic it was uh Osgood was the uh Osgood was there. I think he was the backup. Hmm. So let's see. Let's look at career statistics here. Yep, 08. So he was there for two years in 01 and 02, 03 and 04. Went to Ottawa, then uh, 06, 07, and 07, 08, he was with Detroit again. Huh. He met the requirements. Four years. Yep, he got in. He got in with the wire. <laughs> he got in and got two cups. <laughs> Stuck on that Buffalo. You couldn't yep. even get him one. Wow, I know, right? I know. Man. Um, next one, another controversial one, really to leave off the, leave off a line here, but I think with Detroit, like it's only fair. Pavel Datsuk. No, you, you know what? When I, when I announce mine, he's going to be there too. It's uh guy's phenomenal. I mean, he had, he had the hands of God, the best moves I've ever seen. I mean, remember when he just danced Logan Couture out yeah. of the States? Oh, Broke his ankles. Broke his ankles. I mean, he, if I was Logan Couture, I would have went into an early retirement after that. But. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, my next one, I, it's just throwing some central New York love here, Jimmy Howard. Yeah. He was there for a long time, yeah. all-star games. I think, yep. if, you know, he was in the he was in the pipeline when they won the cup back in 08. Um, he was like when he was good, he was a good goalie. He was like top five in the league in like 2010, 2011 time. Yeah. But history, I mean, time, father time did him dirty. Well, father not only that, but you know what? He was also a victim of circumstance. After that, you know, 08 Cup win and 09 Cup final run, you know, they started to slowly but surely fall on hard times. Yes. And Jimmy was there for that. Yeah. And it, he, he really felt the, uh, the the issues of not having a great defense in front of them and right. you know the injury bug caught up and it was just overall just a a, a a a bad ending to an overall decent career not hall of fame career but hall of pretty good yeah absolutely uh, my next one's brendan uh nope uh, uh joey Koser. Oh boy, you are loading up the knuckle line of aren't you? Listen, you, you got to have a checking line, man. You got to have the tough guys. <laughs> but he he only played for Detroit. The dude bled red and white. I mean, he, Actually, I think he, he ended up with the Rangers later. Did he end up with the Rangers? Yeah, I think he did. Uh, I'm. Uh, I grew well, up. He had to replace Ty Domi. Uh, <laughs> God, <laughs> have you ever heard him talk? No. Ty Domi is one of the most eloquent speakers of all time and one of the most polite people I've ever heard get interviewed. Oh, I thought you were talking about Joe Koser. Oh, no, Joey Koser looks like he smokes Marb Reds for a living. <laughs> <laughs> Joey Koser looks like he has a Harley tattoo on his hand. <laughs> yeah. Jeez. <laughs> oh, man. That's awesome. That's my, awesome. Ne- my next one's uh, an oldie. Uh, I can't even pronounce his name, but looking at his stats, he kind of deserves to be here. Marcel Pronovos. Yeah. Yep. Just just looking at his stats, like you got 96 years, you said? Yeah. We, we're going to be talking about some people we never even heard of. Oh, there's no doubt about that. You know, there's no doubt. Um, you know, include, you know, Larry Murphy, I put on the list. Um, he was, he was there. He's, uh, he was there for those cup, that late 90s cup run. Right. Um, just kind of a missing piece in the back end. You know, he was, he, you know, the, when when they got Larry Murphy, he was kind of, he wasn't a contributor, but he was a necessary part of that team. Right, right. Um, my next guy is somebody who I, again, never heard of, but just looking at his statistics and his career, he was, he, you could put him up here as Gary Bergman. Yeah, he's on my honorables too. Yeah. Um, and my last one is somebody who will, my last player is somebody who a lot of people would also be kind of controversial leaving off a line here, but Henrik Zetterberg. 
believe it or not, you and I are thinking alike on, on some of these here. Oh, yeah, probably. Um, and I'll tell you what makes it so difficult for – because I'll, I'll tell you right now, Datsuk and Zetterberg are on my honorable mentions too, and I'll tell you why. Because looking at these stats for the all-time Detroit Red Wings, they have been blessed to be loaded at center. Yep. Loaded. Loaded at center. So you've only got two center spots in the first and the second team all-stars. So when you have, you know, five, six, seven Hall of Fame centers at your disposal, I'm sorry, but somebody's got to go. Somebody, yeah, somebody's going to have to be left on the back end. Yeah. And, you know, it's unfortunate because, like, Henrik Zetterberg would probably be, like, a top three center in history for, like, the Minnesota Wild. Right. Exactly. You know? exactly. He, he, with the Red Wings, he gets pushed to five, six. Right. Exactly. Uh, exactly. My honorable mention coach is Mike Babcock. All right. I mean, he won the cup in 08. He, that's all it is to me. It's he, he won the cup and he, he, he got wins. Okay. Um, and I threw a GM on here. Cause I think it's uh, cause I, I think he's going to be moving up the list when history, when his career is all said and done. I put my uh, honorable mention general manager right now is Steve Eiserman. <laughs> I couldn't tell you another general manager in franchise history, but Steve, Kenny Eiserman. Holland. Kenny Holland. Oh man, I forgot yeah, about him. He was there for like twenty five years. Oh God. But well, all right. <laughs> yep, I, I forgot about him. <laughs> all right, let's hear yours. All right, so I'll tell you the ones that we agreed on first. So we agreed on Datsuk, Zetterberg, Probert, and Jimmy Howard, and Bergman, Gary Bergman. Okay? okay, we agreed on those. My other ones that I threw in. And I can't believe that I'm putting this guy on an honorable mention list. But like I said, when you're a a franchise that's been blessed with Hall of Fame centers for the better part of 96 years, again, somebody's got to go. Alex Del Vecchio. Now, he is the third all-time leading scorer in Detroit Red Wings history. He was a part of those powerhouse teams in the 50s. I mean, there was during the 50s, it was the Detroit Red Wings or the Montreal Canadiens that were winning the cup. There was no in-between. Yeah. So, Uh, See, I read that he was a winger. Well, he's, he's listed as a center as well. So, and again, and you know what, though? It's tough with these because there are players that played both center and wing, you know, so there's that whole back and forth. Um, I got him listed as a center as an honorable mention. Okay. So it is what it is. Uh, we'll, um, we'll, we'll agree to disagree on that one because he's going to not be – we're not done talking about him. Well, my next guy is actually one of those guys who played both center and wing, and that's Sid Abel. Yes, I could agree with that. Sid Abel, right? Played uh, 570 games for the Wings. Uh, he had 462 total points in that early era, though. He was uh, 1938 to 1952. He is in the Hockey Hall of Fame. Um, but it was right before that dominant team of the 50s. Uh, but people forget that they had kind of an early dynasty in the 30s going into the early 40s as well. Yeah. So anyways, that's my Sid Abel pick. Oh, Chris Chelios. And this one was hard. Because I didn't realize that Chelly played there for almost 10 years. Yeah. Yes, he won cups. He certainly did. Uh, he was in the tail end of his career, so the offensive numbers really weren't there. But, of course, that doesn't mean everything with defensemen. And I totally get that Chelly was brought all kinds of leadership to those teams, too, which is invaluable. Um, but you know what? Ed, this is the part that really kind of – it's tough for me. Is I don't still don't think of Chelly as a Red Wing. I think of him as a Blackhawk. Yeah. As a Blackhawk or maybe a Montreal Canadian, but I mostly as a Blackhawk. Yeah. And you know what? And in looking at those teams, especially the, the 2000s teams, right? The, so the 02 and the 08 Cup winners, there wasn't a lot of homegrown talent there. They brought in a lot of outside help. Yeah. You know, that, so it, this is all where it gets conflated, too, because do you throw Brett Hall on this list. Is, this a true, you know, is Brett Hall a true Red Wing? No, not really. No. I mean, I, he'll always be a St. Louis Blue to me. Yeah. I will never consider Brett Hall a. A Red Wing. I'll never consider Brett Hall a Dallas star. No. Right? So no. he won cups both places where he didn't win as a blue. But anyways. That's... Yeah. It's, you know, and you could throw other names on that list too. Like, I mean, let's face it. Was Marion Hosa ever a true Red Wing? No, he was only there for a short amount of time. I think he was a Blackhawk. Yeah. I think Marion Hosa is a Blackhawk. You know, that's, it's just yeah. the, the Red Wings bring, you know, they, they don't, they, they used to have a very easy time attracting talent. Sure. Attracting top end players. You know, now it's a little bit more difficult. Now they don't have, you know, the 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 ends to meet when it comes to attracting those those 
top end players. So now that's why we're seeing them down that downturn. But like back when I was a kid, the Red Wings had the stars. Oh yeah. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Like, what Gretzky wanted to be a Red Wing when they were talking about that trade from Edmonton. They on he was talking about on Spent and Chicklets. He wanted to be a Red Wing. Yeah, because he idolized Gordy Howe. Yep. So and again, oh, somebody cool. else we're probably going to talk about later. Oh, you think? So I only got two left. Uh, the octopus, because there was no position to put the octopus, but the octopus is as much a part of Detroit Red Wing lore as anything. Oh, the, uh, it's got to go somewhere, right? Well, I, I think um, it was. What was that? I was talking with I was talking with my girlfriend about. Uh, oh, hi! There she is. We got a plan. Oh, she's photo bombing the show again. <laughs> we were talking. We were talking about the uh, Nashville catfish, and I threw out the. I was like, "Oh, you want to know a weirder one?" And I talked about the Detroit octopus, and she was like, "That one's weird." <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it really is. I, you know what? I I really like that pick. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And my coach of this honorable mention team is Tommy Ivan. Tommy Ivan was their the Red Wings coach from 1947 to 1954. Uh, he won three cups. So 1950, yeah. 1952, and 1954. Cubs talk. Cubs talk. Yeah, I threw Babcock on mine because he was the one in my lifetime. He was yeah. the notable. He was the notable one in my lifetime that could make an honorable mentions list. But well, you know, and for as old as I am, I'm Tommy Ivan is still not in my lifetime. But still, no, I know, I know. It was like four years before you were born. Just, just missed it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's move on to our second team, shall we? Before we yeah. continue to talk about my age. <laughs> well, Dave's not here. I got to do it to yeah. somebody. Well, yeah, and I got to take his place, right? <laughs> all right. So your second team, all your second team, Detroit Red Wing All Star All Time Team. Who's your coach? My coach is Jack Adams. Okay, good choice. Uh, Nine hundred and forty six games coach with four hundred and thirteen wins, three hundred and ninety losses, and one hundred and sixty one ties. Three Cubs, but more no, more notably, that award is named after him. Yeah, it, that's not an accident. No, no, it's not. An award I got to touch a few weeks ago at the uh, Lad Am Cup. Oh, nice. Yep. Very cool. Very cool. Yep. They, oh. had, the, they had all of them. They had the Norris. They had the uh, Hart, the Adams, and the Vesna. Oh, that's really cool. Yeah. I got to be, I got pictures of all of them. Nice. Nice. I'll have to see them sometime. Uh, yeah. I'll send them to you. All right. Cool. All right. So my coach is Scotty Bowman. And this was, this was tough. This was really tough. Scotty Bowman's got 410 wins, 193 losses, 98 ties. It's a phenomenal record as a Red Wings coach. He was there for uh, 10 seasons, I think it was, winning the Cup in 97, 98, and 02. He won that Jack Adams Award in 1996. Um, Scotty Bowman, of course, did a phenomenal job. This comes down to two things. I'll always think of Scotty Bowman as the Montreal Canadiens coach. See, I, I always think I always, him as, I always think of him as a Red Wings coach. And here's my and, and this is not to take away from Scotty Bowman because this is absolutely not his fault. But for his tenure in Detroit, Scotty Bowman was surrounded by Hall of Fame talent. Yeah. Surrounded by it. He but when you when you have when you're a name it. like Scotty Bowman, do you he attract that talent? And again, yeah, absolutely. And it's not his fault. Not his fault at all. But I'm just saying that for as great of a coach as he is. When you've got you know six seven Hall of Famers in your lineup, well, you better win. Yeah, no, you're yeah. right. I I'm I'm a firm believer that Scotty Bowman attracted that talent. He was a oh yeah, point. for um, sure. And one thing I will always appreciate about Scotty Bowman, he was never afraid to mix it up with the opposing players. No, he wasn't. He wasn't. I loved he it. He's he's down there. Just he he just steps down in the players' line, just absolutely just shredding into Claude Lemieux. Um and other Avalanche players going after Lemieux in the parking lot, <laughs> like it's uh, that, that's something that's old time hockey you got to appreciate. Oh, absolutely! And you know what else he doesn't get enough credit for is, you know, if you recall when the when the Russian players were coming over when that whole barrier was broken down, he was one of the ones that really embraced it. As yeah. a matter of fact, he was the one while he was in Detroit that put all five Russian players together because he had such respect from the way Anatoly Tarasov, who who was the, the father of Russian hockey, coached the game and let his players just be creative. Yeah. And instead of trying to put them into ah, the North American lanes, shall we say, because, I mean, when we were growing up, right, it was if you're a left wing, you stay on the left side. If you're yeah. a, you st- remember all that, right? Yep. The Russians were much different. They were just go where you, be creative, get open, and 
basically make offense. Yep. Right? That's what Tarasov taught. And that's exactly what Scotty Bowman did. And honestly, and I think because of that and because of him willing to let those players do that had a tremendous effect on the game today because you don't see players in lanes like you used to. Yeah, no, you're, you just you're seeing them cycle. Yeah, you're seeing you them know? cycle. You see them overload to one side all the time, which sometimes they get burned by. But hey, you know what? That's just the uh, the old school guy in me. But yeah, no, I don't. I don't think Scotty Bowman gets enough credit for that. No, he does not. And he he's overall like just one of those coaches that will go down in the halls of history as probably the greatest coach of all time. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, I, he I, won yeah. everywhere. I can definitely. Yeah, I I, I can agree with that. He won everywhere, even even when he was helping his son learn how to be a GM. He won, right? You right. know, it's I, I can wholeheartedly agree with Scotty Bowman being on this list somewhere. Oh yeah, absolutely. All right, my friend, who's your goalie? My goalie on this on second line is Chris Osgood. Yep, we agree. Yeah, we it, agree. It, it, it's it's overall like like we said, Cubs talk. He got what. Two of the two. two or three, three with the Red Wings, 08, 97, 98. Yes, that's right. He was backing up Vern in 97. Yeah, and he was starting for 98. Starting 98, that's right. So he, uh, yeah, Osgood overall, just a phenomenal goalie. A goalie I remember, uh, I remember the first time I got his card when I was uh, a kid, and it was, he was in a Vancouver jersey. And even I was like, when I was that young, I was like, oh, this does not look right. He did not look right in a Vancouver uniform. Right, he no. put on that Red Wings that Red Wings sweater, and he looked great. He was a Red Wing through and through. And I'm not actually sure is his number retired. I don't think it is. We'll it needs to be. Up. It needs oh, yeah. to. Be. Well, and you know what the nice thing about him was too? He was a homegrown talent. Yeah. When they were bringing in all that outside help, when they were bringing in the the Dominic Hachicks of the world, the Mike Vernons of the world, he was the homegrown Detroit guy that still managed to share in all that success, even though. They brought in, like I said, uh, for lack of in, better term, right? Yeah, yeah, they had they, you know, that that ninety seven team. It was like, I mean, yeah, they had homegrown talent, but like the Russian five were a big part of that. Oh, sure. You know, yes. and it, it, can you call them homegrown if they all played together in Russia? I mean, yeah, yeah. They, you can make the argument that yes, because that was their first NHL stint, but right. You know, I really don't think it's homegrown when they were already coached and professionals before yeah but that's they, yeah, you're, you're right time for that absolutely mm-hmm. but like absolutely. You, you have that homegrown talent like chris osgood and it, it really puts an identity to the team right right you know who's your goalie Same you said thing. we agreed we agreed, yep, with we agreed on this one so okay. i want to know who your two defensemen are all right i'm going to start off with the easy one nicholas mm-hmm. cronwall Okay, we're agreeing there too. Nicholas Cronwall, I mean the the I mean he brought physicality back to the sport when it really started to die. Um he was overall just a a red wing for life and you can't help but appreciate that. Um and my other one is Paul Coffey. Mm. All right. All right. He met the requirements four seasons. Yeah. Yeah, uh, he did. He met the requirements of four seasons, uh, but his points were over a point a game with the Red Wings. Yeah, but in the time that he played for him, that's not really. I mean, it's impressive. Don't get me wrong, but I think it was actually quite impressive because he didn't have he didn't have to be relied on like that. R- well, which actually freed things up. For, I mean, listen, I'm not taking anything away from him. The guy's a Hall of Famer. He's one of the best defensemen of all time. Like, yeah, we'll think of him as an Oiler for the rest of our life, but. Uh, the second oiler, team I always or do you think of him as a penguin? I think of him as an oiler. Yeah. But my second team I'll always remember him with is Detroit because I watched those cups. Yeah. I watched true, those years. True. I again, didn't watch I was a kid. I was a little kid. I was an infant when he was with the Penguins. See, here's what and that's where the whole recency bias comes in for both of us, too. Yeah. Because we got to see these players. Yeah. Like it's it, talking about my lifetime, Paul Coffey was uh, I, like you'll always remember with the Oilers because you always had that Gretzky connection, right? You know? But then that second team, you always think of them. I always think of them as the Red Wings because I watched them, and then I got to see him play a season, a really sad season with the Bruins. But you know what? If you think about it, you want to talk about a guy who's just sold out under a lucky star, though, huh? I oh. mean, obviously one of the most gifted defensemen of all time, right? Yes. Yeah. Play his prime years with Wayne Gretzky, then goes to play with Mario Lemieux. 
And then he goes, it was Steve Eiserman. Oh, yeah. Come on. I mean, <laughs> oh, yeah. No, I mean, the guy was the hockey gods are smiling on you, sir. Yes. Yes. He, he, he said a, uh, he, he, he did his Our Fathers before he got drafted. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh. So we agree on Cronwall. Right. And I'll tell you what, I, I actually was struggling between Cronwall and Chelios for this. But Cronwall played almost twice as many games as a Red Wing than Chelios did. And that was the ultimately ultimately the deciding factor for me. Yes, that was that oh. was it for me, too. If you think of I don't think of Nick Cronwall as anything else but a Detroit Red Wing. He was nothing else. But he was never he never played for another team. So, yeah. you know, that's going to count the Swedish league. But like, you know. yeah, yeah, but I'm talking about NHL. Um, my second defenseman, you've already mentioned him, uh, Marcel Pronovos. OK. Um, and again, this is one of those blasts from the past. He played from 60. Um, let me see. You're looking at it right now. 1949 to 1965. So he was a part of those 50s powerhouse teams. Uh, yeah. For his time as a defenseman to put up 80 goals and 217 assists is extremely impressive. You know, yeah. don't forget, you're playing, you're, you're, you're playing in the original six era, which was defense, defense, defense. Yep. So to be able to put up those kinds of num- numbers as a defenseman is very impressive. Um, and like we, we tend to talk, Cups talk. Cubs talk. Yeah. So the, I agree. The is definitely there. I definitely um, agree. Cubs talk. So, yeah. Um, the only reason why he didn't make my list is because I think Paul Coffey historically, like when we, when we talk about careers, Paul Coffey had just as impressive of a career, if not more. And I got to watch him. Right. As a career. Absolutely. But I'm looking at it in the context of the team. Yeah. like uh, As the team. You know what I mean? That's. I because, mean, he, he, you got to admit, he defended, he had to defend against the best two pronovos with um, who was on the other side, Henri Richard, Mar- uh, the Rocket, yeah, the, the Rocket Richard, Jean Beliveau, uh, Jean Beliveau uh, Stan Makita, Stan Makita, and Bra- Bobby Hull. Bobby Hull. Yeah. Um, you had some powerhouse. I mean, look at, look at the teams that the Leafs had, right? Dave oh, yeah. Know. You know, I mean, it's it was just unbelievable. Yeah. I mean, it's just overall, like, uh, that era was, like, four teams, and the Bruins and the Rangers were left in the dust. Right, right. You know, it was – and that, that was that was the era. Like, it, it, they stay stacked. Those four teams were stacked. Yeah. I'm yeah, so happy absolutely. Toronto sucks now. <laughs> They're so insufferable. <laughs> well, I bet you you can't wait till we do a Toronto Maple Leafs best of the best. Oh, my God. It's going to be nobody. <laughs> They have one player, Austin Matthews. That's all. <laughs> okay, well, before the show gets banned in the city of Toronto, let's move on to our left wing. <laughs> yes, my left wing's Ted Lindsay. Good call. Ted That's Lindsay. Call. Um, what he did off the ice for the players union is uh is stuff uh, you know that's phenomenal. But right. we're talking on ice here. I mean, it's easy to be on a line with Gordy, I guess. But overall, like he, he's Top two left wingers in the history of the Red Wings, which is no slouch. Right, um, right. I don't think nice he's boy. the best left winger, but he's number two. Oh, uh, when you're called terrible, Ted Lindsay. <laughs> yeah, so you, you, well, your head is on a swivel at all times. As well. That that era, I I wish I got a chance to watch that era live because it was just just violence incarnate, and I it, it you're seeing just elbows high. To guys with no helmets, <laughs> yeah. yeah, stick swinging. They didn't care. Oh God, I, I watched a video of an old old stick fight, and it was just the most disgusting thing I've ever seen. I was even shocked. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you who mine is, and, and I struggle a little bit with this one, but I went with Brendan Shanahan. And the only okay. reason I struggled is because Brendan Shanahan is one of those guys. I don't know what to think of him as. I don't know whether to think of him as a New Jersey Devil. I don't know whether to think of him as a St. Louis Blue. But he I... had the best when he was in Detroit. So, for me, and he was there nine seasons. I didn't realize he was there that long. Yeah, he was there for quite some time. I think it was like 95 to 04. Yeah, I'm going to look at that right now. So, my computer, the other computer stops freezing up here. There we go. So, I didn't write. So, it was 96 to 06. 96 right, so to 06. So, yeah. So he was there for three cups. And a big part of them as well. Big part of them. So big I had, I actually read also Brendan Shanahan spent time on the right side too. So I put him as my right winger. All right. Well, I mean, that's, yeah. I mean, it is yeah. what it is. I got him. I got him at left. He's a wing. 
Yeah, uh, he's a winger. I mean, really, you could you could flip flop him. Yeah, I, exactly. I actually agree with a right handed shot being on the left left hand side. I don't mind that. I really don't. I don't mind that at all, actually. So it's so like seeing him on the left wing as a right hander. That was right. that you know I, that, that's something I'll always appreciate. <laughs> right. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Get all right. Your center. Hand. My center is Fedorov. Yeah. It, it, no slouch being number two in the franchise in my eyes, but you know it's hard to compete with who I think we both have as number one. Oh, there's no, there is no, no doubt about that. Um, I had Fedorov too, but I, I had a hard time because, believe it or not, and again, this is because we didn't grow up in this era, but Alex Del Vecchio's numbers were actually much better. He was there much longer too. Yeah, he was, he was with uh, Detroit for 24 seasons. Yeah, yeah, I have his stats written you know, out. It was impressive. Goal of 825 assists with for 1,281 points. Um, but I also kind of I look at it and say, wow, 24 seasons and I've been very talented, of course. Um, but yeah, no, no wonder he got that many points for Fedorov. The 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 tipping point for me, I, I watched him play. Yeah. And when he when he was in his prime, I'm telling you, he was the best player in the league by far. For those, for those two to three seasons when he was just everything. Fedorov was the most impressive player I've ever seen play the game. Yeah. You want to talk about the complete 200 foot player? There Just, it is. Yeah. Right there. Was, Sergey, Sergey Fedorov in his prime. Sergey Fedorov in his, in his prime was the most unstoppable force the league had. Yeah. And, you know, like, yeah, he, his prime was not as long as other players. But he also spent most of that prime in Russia playing in what was it at that time? The it wasn't yeah, it was, the it wasn't it was, the continental, it was no, like the Super League, it, the Russian it, Super League. There it is. Yeah, that was it. The old Russian Super it. League. Oh god. But like he was and like even now, I think he's gonna be the next coach of the Red Wings. It'd be interesting, that's for sure. I think like Eiserman's grooming him to become the next coach and like do take your time in Russia, do your thing in the K with Moscow, and then when you're ready, here's this job for you that I want you to have. Could you imagine that if they won another cup together like that? It's it's distinctly possible because you're going to see players flock to the Red Wings. Oh, man, and you're right. You, you know, you're going to see players want to play for Sergei Fedorov because they idolized him growing up. Right. Absolutely. Okay, so who's your second team right winger? My second team right winger is Brendan Shanahan. Okay. Sec- right. 716 games played, almost a point per game at 633 points. Overall, like, just like, I didn't even realize he, I, I realized he played for Detroit for a long time. I always thought of him as a Ranger, actually. Yeah. Yeah. He did I always, spend time I, there. Sure. I always thought of him as a Ranger because I just remember him and he was a menace. Yeah. Being a menace out there. Like, you, you look, you hear about, like, like, he, he, he ran so Brad Marchand could walk. <laughs> Just the, I like that. He 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 was he, he was playing. He tiptoed that line of dirty and clean. Was not afraid to get in those those muck zones, the the corners in front of the net. He wasn't afraid to to lay hands on people. He just overall just a menace on the ice, and he got points for it. Right. Like he he got plenty of them. And, Honestly, like to Steve Eisenman should think about trying to coax him away from that Toronto job and get him in Detroit. Did you ever hear about that story with him and Rick Vive? No. So, you know, Vive played for Toronto for the longest time. Yeah. Well, Brendan Shanahan grew up in Toronto, and that's who his, you know, his idol was, loved the guy, this and that. Well, he got to meet him after, a, I think it was a, after a Maple Leafs practice one time when he was a kid. And he wanted to get his autograph and all that. Well, he got snubbed. Oh. snubbed so Shanahan comes into the league. I think it was 1988 is when he broke in as an 18 year old uh, with the with the Devils. With the Devils, and he lines up across from Vive on a face off, turns around and creams him. No. Good. Long story short, there's a little bit more to it than that, but <laughs> it's a payback for not signing the autograph. <laughs> So let that be a lesson to any kid who's going to be a superstar in the future. Make sure you sign autographs for kids who, after practice. Who did that? Ovechkin did that. 
and then before a game, Ovechkin did that to a player, but like I think he was playing for Columbus, and then before a game, sent him an autograph six saying, "Don't hit me too hard." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh well, I'll tell you what. Let's get to the easy part now. Yeah. Generally, the easiest parts. Our first line all time Detroit Red Wings. Yes. All right. So I know your coach is going to be Scotty Bowman. Yes. Mine's Jack Adams. Okay. We've already discussed both of them. We flip flopped. Yeah. So we've discussed both of them. You could fill in for either or, I think. I don't think yeah. either one of us is wrong. You know, so let's go to the goalie. And I think we're going to agree on this. Um, The, the goalie. Uh, Thomas Grice. <laughs> No, Terry Sawchuk. I was just Sawchuk. gonna say, I was about to kill your mic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think that there's any even remotely other any other choice than Terry Sawchuk. I mean, 350 wins and 2.44 goals against average. In an uh, era that you could not outs. In an era where you couldn't get those. No, no. As a matter of fact, he played such a such a long time ago that he didn't keep uh, save percentage. No. No, they had to go back in time to figure that out. Yeah. Like, it's I, – the guy was great. Oh, there's no doubt. No like a, doubt. I know one of those players I wish I got a chance to watch. Um, saw his move, the, bi- auto bi- not the auto bi- but the biographical movie they made about him. Holy, and, I was going to ask you about that. And it, it's it was overall yeah. like it's – like the guy had a life. Yeah, he did. It was, it was nuts. Um, the fact that he was able to keep a steady hockey career was impressive. Yeah, and for I mean, anybody who's listening and wants to see that, you can get that for free on Tubi. I don't, is it on Tubi? Any, yeah, we're not making anything extra off it, but I figure, you know what, anytime cool. that you can see a movie like that for free, do it. Yeah, like that, um, what was it? Uh, they got the Ice Ra- Guardians on there. Ice Guardians is good. The Wrath of Grapes, have you seen that? Yes. That Hold one's you. good. Keep your head up, kid. Yep, yep. Wrath keep your head up, keep your yep. head up, kid, and The Wrath of Grapes. Um those were those were great. So many good ones. They used to have only the dead know the Brooklyn Americans. That was really good too. It was a documentary, of course. Really? The, oh, was that the one where the owner was in the mob and? Yes. Oh God, I gotta see that one. I love it's not on there anymore, movie. but I'm trying right. to find a DVD copy of it. I gotta, I gotta get a, I gotta, I gotta see that one. I love a good mafia movie. <laughs> good fellas with hockey. Yeah. Right. Right. <laughs> okay. So I know we're gonna agree on one of the defensemen. We might agree on both. Um, obviously, after Bork retired, yeah, after Bork retired, Nick Lynchham was the guy I looked at. Yeah. Um, the, the dude could have played baseball. Yeah. Like, he was batting pucks out of the air left and right like it was none of his business. <laughs> he could have played baseball and had, had a 350 batting average. Like, he, he was – he just – his his stick work was impeccable. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Like, I'm just absolute – just lunacy with with his stick work. I you, you watching him growing up and like lead that team after Iserman was was just something of legend. Greatest defenseman in Detroit Red Wings history. I would put him up there as top three defenseman of all time. Yeah, Hell, I, would, I would. I would put it like even even now, like if they, like you, you talk about some of the defensemen in the league now, they none of them hold the stick up to Nick Lindstrom. No, and you know what the nice thing about Nick Lindstrom is, too, is we always talk about how it's hard to compare generations, right? Nick Nick Lindstrom is one of those players that could have played in any era. Any. And played well. Yeah. He could have played in any era and played well. I think if he was in his prime today, he'd be competing with Connor McDavid every year for the heart. Right. You know, one of those types of players. And he – just just overall like and like just a phenomenal on ice presence he was he was never irrelevant no no he wasn't you're right he he you're was meaningful right. to every game and and when he was there when he was in his prime he was meaningful to every game and absolutely absolutely his, uh you know he kind of coached Zetterberg into taking the captaincy captaincy um I think he was there for what's his name's first season, uh, Larkin. I think you're right, actually. I think he I was there for Dylan Larkin's right. first season and kind of was uh, just overall just a, a nope, phenomenal. Just missed, him. just missed him. Oh, he might. I think he was still present in the organization. Yes, yeah, he was point. still. Yes, he was still a part of the organization, but he wasn't. Uh, he wasn't a player any longer. I think it's, at that point he was a consultant or something. Some yeah. office. 
But like he's somebody who was so good in the locker room that you have to put him in that position so he could oh yeah lead oh, no, you, no. you know especially like young defensemen of today where the game has changed he was the reason why the game changed sure you sure. know that you know you look at that 2004 era of the NHL where it was like defensemen were the biggest guys defense you know like you had multiple guys that could kind of stand up to Chara on a right, team, right right per team sure and you have. You know, and then you look at Nick Lindstrom and how he was able to move the puck. He was always a, a fir- pass first kind of guy, and he would just absolutely just blow people out of the water. Yeah, absolutely. Who's your other one? Reed Larson. Ooh, Reed Larson. Reed Larson. And this is, again, one of those interesting going, choice going back in time and just reading his statistics. Like, it's something like he was, what was he? 1949 to 65 or something like no, that. He was 76 to 86. Or 76 to 80. Oh, no, he was born in 45. That's Yeah. Right. He was kind of like Eli Afraidy. Had yeah. that ridiculously hard shot. Yeah. And like 708 games played with the Red Wings, 188 right. goals, and 382 assists for 570 points. That's nothing to slouch at. No, it's not. It's not. I mean, you know it, he was always one of those guys that flew under the radar. Yeah. And you know what? Like it was a shame that he was a part of the Dead Wings era. Yeah, but I think was, that, that's what hurts him in the overall. Yeah, sense. but just looking at his statistics, it's nothing really for me to. I, I, there's no one else to compare him to. You're, well, that's that's a very good point. Um, we agree on Lidstrom, of course. Yes, my second defenseman is Red Kelly, Hall okay. of Fame defenseman. One of the stalwarts of that '50s powerhouse team. It goes back to Cups talk, and, and this guy's in the Hall of Fame. Okay, uh, yeah, I agree. Not quite the stats of a Reed Larson, but again, he played in a little bit different of an era too. Yes, uh, when Reed Larson was playing, they were starting to open the game up a little bit. Uh, Red Kelly, and he also did spend some time up front forward, but for the most part, he was a defenseman. And you know, 162 goals, 310 assists, 472. Points overall, he played from 47 to 1960 for the Red Wings. Again, I can't ignore the fact that he's a Hall of Famer. Yeah. Yeah, anyway, no, I completely agree. Point. So <coughs> that was that was the, the tipping point for me. Left wing, my friend. Who you got? Left wing. I have Alex Del Vecchio. Okay. Okay. That's, Alex, that's okay. You know, I saw I saw his statistics and I saw him actually listed as a left winger. So I really couldn't pass this one up because he. No. This one was a layup to me when I once I saw right. statistics. It was fifteen hundred and fifty games played. Would you say yeah. twenty four seasons? Yep, twenty four. Twenty four seasons as a Red Wing. That's a long time. And he he had to have been good enough to not get traded, especially yeah. back then. Right. You know, they would have they would have traded somebody for a bag of pucks back then. <laughs> right. Like we see, we hear stories about Chris Draper getting uh, signed off the waiver wire for a dollar. Uh, there's been players that get traded for a bus. Like, that's <laughs> insane. <laughs> um, but 456 goals and 825 assists for 1,281 points. That's nuts. Yeah. yeah and, that's, that's and, in that era, in that era, that's the, he's, he's putting, he, he's, he's like, that's averaging almost relevancy in every game. Sure. Like that's nuts. Like, how do you have that career? Yeah, absolutely. Back, back then, no helmet. the 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 game was might have the game was harder to play back then, and you're playing 24 seasons for one team. And you know what? Like, He's a guy who doesn't get recognized enough in the in the no. overall history of hockey. He just no. doesn't. There's some. There's a lot of players in in hockey that I I feel like they don't get recognized nearly no. enough. Um, and I'll tell you he, why. Because I've always said it. I've always said that the NHL does not do a good enough job of promoting its history. Well, like you watch you 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 watch a, a Chicago Bears game, you see 10, 10 highlights of Walter Payton per game. Yeah. You right. watch a basketball game, you hear Jordan, you hear Scottie Pippen, you hear yes. all these, you know, you watch baseball, you, you're seeing Aaron Judge highlights next to Babe Ruth highlights. And I watch a hockey game and like they're not no. talking about these old these old players that no. were heroes to the current players. And you know what irritates me is that they had the NHL network, and instead of doing like more history related type shows, they'll do like on the fly like eight times in a row. Yeah, it's like yeah. I saw these highlights. Yeah, like, like, like talk about the, give me some talk, talk about the eighty nine Calgary Flames and how they overcame exactly. adversity and got Laney McDonald his cup. Talk about the talk about the you know. 
the the, the Gretzky trade from L.A. from Edmonton to L.A. Being like, uh, you know how like NFL has NFL films. Yeah. If NHL had something like that. NHL films that would be phenomenal. They need it, and like honestly, they need to get that corny ass music too. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> I love it. I love those and uh, those corny NFL instrumentals. Yeah, exactly. Because like, well, hey, hockey's got one too. We just don't hear it as much anymore. The yeah, hockey Canada theme song. The hockey night in Canada theme song and Brass Bonanza. The yeah, the <laughs> yeah, exactly. And that one country western tune from the guy from Calgary. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Oh, uh, well, <clears throat> I'll tell you, for my left wing, I went with Ted Lindsay uh, for reasons we've already discussed. Yeah. The impact the guy had on the game was just unbelievable. And yeah. Especially, and another one who kind of gets forgotten in, the, in the, the, the halls of hockey history, so to speak. But I'll tell you what, players everywhere to this day owe him a debt of gratitude. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I remember when he passed. Um, I went to a, like it was like maybe six days after he passed away. Um, and Bruins had a home game. It was their first home game after that. Um, I was, it was Boston versus Carolina and they had like a huge, like memorial for Ted Lindsay before the game. Mm -hmm. Like that just shows that like, he meant a lot to hockey when you, when teams that you didn't play for two, two, one team you didn't play for. And the other team wasn't even around when you were around were, are honoring this guy. Exactly. You know, exactly. like they, those two teams in a personal level probably didn't owe him anything and probably disliked him because he took cups away from them. But yeah, still, yeah. Yeah, but they, they gave him a proper send off of only that only legends deserve. Um, right. You know, statistically, okay. I don't think he was quite there with Del Vecchio and I was going with that. But, Ted Lindsay would have meant a lot to the game of hockey and players yeah. overall. Well, and, and honestly, my my things were just based off what I saw for their positions. That's yeah. really, you know, so. You know, I, yeah. You know. it's, but I, I think with that said, <laughs> I we, don't think there's really um, much discussion about the last two spots here. No, no. Um, I think center is, is a no-brainer. Honestly. Yeah, Dylan Larkin. Yeah, yes. Yes, the future Stevie Y. No. Yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> um yeah. David Perron. Yeah, yeah, there you go, right? <laughs> Hasn't even um, played a regular season game with him already a great. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> They're already getting the ring of honor. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so, Stevie Y named a named the team captain at age twenty one. Yes. You want to talk uh, about pressure right off the hop. Yeah, that was, I remember that was a time that it was just ending the Dead Wings era. Yeah, he was going to yeah. be the one that was going to take him into the the promised land, really. And he did. He, he did. Disappoint. He did not disappoint. No, um, not at all. Uh, Twenty two seasons with the Wings, uh, six hundred ninety two goals, one thousand sixty three assists. You know what? Uh, I always kind of felt bad for Steve Eiserman in the regards that, in the same way, I feel kind of bad for like Dale Howarchuk, uh, you know, those uh, Ronnie Francis. Is if they didn't play in the Gretzky and Lemieux era, they would have been the best. Would have gotten even more love as far yeah. as you know. You know goes. Like Gretzky, the Gretzky and the Lemieux era. Like, yeah, I, I've I grew up kind of in that era at the, towards the tail end of it. Um, and not being a fan of either of those teams that they played for, um, it kind of shows like. And you grew up with being a Gretzky fan, so I don't know if you could agree with this, but it taught it taught me to appreciate the team I had and that I had to watch, you know, because like, yeah, we didn't have Wayne Gretzky, but we had Joe Thornton. Right. We had Ray Bork. <laughs> I will tell you this, that growing up, you know, obviously as an Oilers fan first, I didn't because, again, I was a kid. I was just, you know, I was in 1980, I was six years old. So that's about when, you know, when Gretzky came in and that whole Oiler, Oiler dynasty started. So through into my teenagers, I didn't realize just how good they were because they were always good. You start to assume, that, oh, this is how it's always going to be. So I didn't realize how good those teams were until Gretzky went to L.A. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, it's like, wow. Whoa, you mean to tell me there's not Hall of Famers up and down the lineup here? What you know? So, and the very fact that they, you know, were able to turn things around in LA when Gretzky was there. Obviously, it's a testament to his greatness, but we're not talking about Wayne Gretzky. We're talking about Steve Eiserman. And the very fact of what he did, I mean, 
look at he didn't have much talent to work with at first. No. And he was still putting up these, you know, 150 point seasons. <coughs> oh. Oh, yeah. Uh, Steve Eiserman is, I think, hands down the best captain in league history. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. Uh, that's that's giving credit where credit is due. He didn't waver on being a Red Wing. He was a Red Wing. Yeah. Yeah. No like call. once one to me, once Gretzky left the Kings, like he was excited to be a king. He was excited to leave. Right. Right. But once he got traded to St. Louis, he just stopped caring. Like and, and like, yeah, his prime wasn't there anymore. And yeah. His you know, uh, but like I, I've I think he just didn't care because, like, he was he. He's like, I did it all. What else right. is there for me to do? Where like Steve Eiserman did it all and still wanted to do it again. Right, right, you right. Know, no, like, there's, and I think injuries with Wayne too. His back was really starting to starting to go. And, again, and, you know? and let's not forget, Steve Eiserman nabbed the puck from Gretzky. Yes, in that, Western, Con- in that Western Conference oh, overtime five- game seven. Yep, overtime game yeah. seven, and then yeah. just, just I, I would say the best camera footage of a of a slap shot I've ever seen. Yeah, yeah, definitely. That was as as much as it is stunk to see Wayne right. get pocketed like that. That was just an amazing shot, and and I'll tell you those those teams back then those those Red Wing teams, man. You know they got close in '95, but they were they were Marty Brodeurd. Yep, they were got they got Brodeurd. Yeah, and then but, they got avalanched in '96. Yeah, they finally broke through in '97 and '98. So yeah, you know, and uh, you know not for nothing too. Most of that what was it 26 straight seasons of the the Red Wings going to the playoffs. Second was, most of all time. It was the Stevie Y era. Yep, second most of all time. Yeah, Bruins are number one. Well, like hey. always. Oh, yeah, boy. oh boy, here we go. <laughs> I'm getting, I'm starting to get those preseason jitters where I'm like, we're winning the cup this year. <laughs> yeah. I know we're not, but we're you winning better, the cup. I was say, you better start getting some of your players back then. So <laughs> I got, we're not, we're not winning the cup, but we're winning the cup. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you just, it was the Dixie Cup, right? Yeah, no, it was, um, it was the Red <laughs> Solo Cup that we won. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and now, drum roll, please. Our right wing. We'll say it at the same time. Three, two, one. Gordy. Gordy, how? Wow. Yeah. Um, there's, this is a no brainer. <laughs> so, I have a lot with him. Um, my favorite player of all time. Like when I was growing up, my dad was like, "Yeah, Bobby Orr's great. Ray Bork's great. All these players great. No one beats Gordy Howe." Yeah. You know, even when you're Wayne Gretzky's favorite player, that's that speaks volumes. Right. Um, I had a chance to uh, to meet him and work with him when the, the first uh, Comets Fan Fest. Oh, really? So I was working security for that, and I was leaving. Like that, that was my last day. Like I was like, I'll do this one last event, and like, you know, go on to a different job. Um, and my boss was like, Hey, you like hockey? I'm like, Yeah. And he's like, Work with Gordy Howe. I don't know who he is. I'm like, Okay. Yeah. You know, and, and I would I kept it. I I wrecked I well that's the thing he was a, he was a football guy didn't know anything about hockey. Um, well that's the thing is like here in the states, everyone knows Wayne Gretzky, but no one knows who Gordy Howe is. Yeah, okay, I, you, know? I, I, you got to be a hockey fan for Gordy Howe. I guess I understand that. Um, and I had the chance to work with him, and I took full advantage. Like when he told me I was working with him, I was like. <gasps> uh, well, no, that that was me on the. I was I played it cool, but in the inside, I was like, my heart started beating a little faster. I'm like, I'm meeting my hero today. You were basically Ralph Cramden. Yeah, going, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. Exactly. <laughs> um, he. Uh, so we had this. They had this lunch before, like this. Like I, you know, they they kind of served everyone meals, and I was working security, but well, there was nothing to secure at that point. So we uh, we ate with them. Um, and I sat down with him, and him and his son, uh, um, Mark, was there. And I, I just sat down, and I'm just like, I, I got to talk to you for a little bit. Like, my name's Ed. I'm working with you today. And he's like, oh, nice to meet you, and super nice. And his son, his son Mark, who's a legend also, was super oh, nice. Too. And uh, I just told him, like, I play. I play hockey. I've been playing my whole life. And he's like, oh, really? I was like, what do you play? I'm like, I'm a defenseman, this and that. And I'm just like, by the way, you're my favorite of all time. Like you're the you're to me, you're the best player to ever play the game. And you could kind of tell he loved hearing it. Oh yeah. But yeah. I think he loved it more because I'm I, I was what 21 at the time. 
wow. 20, 20, 21 at the time. And he's like, you're really young to be saying that. And I'm just like, no, I grew up idolizing you. Like you were one of those players that I, I was like, my dad showed me the film, or the, the old uh, uh, Don Cherry tapes with you in it. And I'm like, I want to be that guy. Um, nicest guys. I actually, I just bought a, like it's maybe six months ago. I found a, uh, at Cooperstown connection and autographed Gordy Howe card for 90 bucks. And I'm like, oh, sold. Hey, <laughs> sold. That. Yeah, that no, that's, that that's, that, that was, uh, that's kept safe with my, oh, Jerry, with my Jerry Cheever's autograph Jersey and my Wayne Cashman and, uh, Brad Park autograph pucks. Nice. nice. Um, but they, you know, just overall, like, just the way he treated me just as a ner- hockey nerd to me, puts him as the best player of all time. <laughs> yeah. Just because, like, anybody else would get kind of annoyed. Well, you know what? It's it's that with Gordy. You know, he there was every he did everything well. Yeah. Right? And I'll tell you, speaking of Gordy, I was actually in, on a, another podcast here on the Sports History Network, the Historically Speaking Sports Podcast. It's available on Spotify, Apple, wherever you want to listen to your podcast. And uh, we talked about Gordy and his sons. And how they came to you know play together in the WHA, and then that one magical season in uh, Hartford's first year in the NHL. Um, but yeah, it's with with Gordy again. There was nothing that he could not do. No, nothing. nothing. And he was such an impactful, forceful player for for the longevity too. That's the thing because you'll see players that will hang on for too long just because they're <laughs> playing. But they're not quite as effective as they used to be. Of course, and that happens to everybody, father time, right? Yeah, father for, time. For, for Gordy to be as effective as he was for as long as he was, what was he? 51 years old when he played that last season in the NHL. Yep. With for Hartford, right? Yeah. And he still, still had 15 goals and 25 assists as a 51 year old guy. Yeah. That's a, it's unheard of. Yeah. I mean, just father time has never left a victim except for Gordie Howe. I know, right? Like we, we're we're all work. victims of father time and we all will be, but Gordie Howe was the last, was, was his true. It was his like white whale. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> He's like, I got to get him somehow, but yeah, yeah. He, he just keeps evading. He keeps yeah. playing hockey. I don't get it. And then yeah. even then he was what? 62 when he played for the Detroit Vipers. Yeah. That one game. Yeah. I mean, it was, was yeah, yeah, I played, like, he played like three shifts, but like yeah, but that's, that's okay. He was sixty some years old. He was sixty something years old and still had more professional games than me. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> decade of hockey when he played that, just unbelievable, unbelievable. So, yeah, I just overall just the uh, I put him as the greatest player of all time, and any fan base should be able to agree with that. Oh yeah, um, I don't. I don't want to hear you, idiot Bruins fans, saying Bobby Orr is the greatest of all time. He's the third. <laughs> uh, I mean, th- another discussion for another day, but boy, and you crazy. idiot Rangers fans, you got no greatest of all time. <laughs> Jeez, <laughs> we're gonna have to have a roundtable discussion sometime. Yeah, no, don't and, invite your father; he'll punch me right in the face. Just, just argue about who the greatest players were. Just the single greatest player of franchises were of all time, and we'll just yeah. have an, we'll have an art. We'll just have a roundtable argument. Which we're I have to get like, we have to get a at. representative from each original six team. I like it. I like. It. We'll do that, <laughs> and then we'll I'll still fight. I'll still fight for Gordy Howe. <laughs> I know, right? Oh, I'm a Bruins fan, but <laughs> I'm proxy voting for Detroit. Yeah, and then you have then you have somebody else that's like, no, it's Steve Eiserman. No, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> we'll just have to make sure you guys aren't in the same room. That's okay. yeah. <laughs> we'll have to do this over over Streamyard. Oh, no doubt. There's no, there's no <laughs> doubt about that. Well, my friend, that was fun. That was a lot of fun. Yeah. And so, you know what? Of course, we got the all-time team picked. Um, I think we should actually talk about modern history and take a look ahead to the Detroit Red Wings this season. But before we do, I just want to show everybody the shirt that I'm wearing. We talked about this earlier. You see that? That's the, the official Marty's Illegal Stick of Hockey History podcast shirt, which you can order on the sportshistorynetwork.com on the shop. You can get your very own Marty's Illegal Stick Hockey History podcast shirt. Or you can get a mug. That's what we got up there right now. So just so you know, just a she- cheap, shameless plug. That's all. So, yeah, and you're looking like I'm totally impressed. <laughs> I'm going to revamp that logo for you, though. No, 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 no. You know what? This this, this logo is great. My nephew made it. 
Oh, your nephew made it? Yeah. My nephew made it. So oh, that's nice. Oh, you're not touching the logo. <laughs> well, and I'm making up in the jersey. And besides that, I'm 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 terrified to see what you would come up with. So <laughs> it's just a picture of my face. <laughs> yeah, that's even worse. Trust me. <laughs> that's even worse. All right. So I'll tell you what. Why don't we talk about this season coming up for the Detroit Red Wings? I have the roster actually pulled up and it's Perfect. not it's not pretty. Well, maybe not, but I'll tell you what. I think that there's a changing of the guard coming very soon in the Eastern Conference. For the yeah. longest time, it was basically the same eight teams that had been running rough shot, and there was clear separation of the top eight and the, the bottom eight. Yeah. But what do you think? Is this team going to gonna make some noise this year? Are they going to turn the corner? Not quite yet. Um, they're a year or two and a couple, couple effective veterans away. Um just looking at their roster, I mean, we're, we're seeing – who are we seeing on their team? Just on offense, Oscar Sundqvist, Dylan Larkin, Robbie Fabry, um, like I mentioned earlier, David Perron. I, I got to disagree with you on the Dylan Larkin thing. He's a Michigan guy. Yeah. He's a Michigan guy. And I think for somebody like Stevie Y, I think that means something to have that hometown connection for the fans. So I think that they're going to do everything they can to re-sign him. Uh but the I don't think mix. I don't think he wants to resign. I I don't I I don't know. I'm not in his head, so I don't really know. But like, uh, he's he's how old now? He's what twenty nine? No, I think he's like twenty twenty six. Twenty yeah. six? I feel like I've been hearing his name for like a decade now. Yeah, right. But like he like he's coming up on a decade. He's been in the league for eight years. Yeah. So, um, you know, kind of kind of that Nathan McKinnon, I've been in the league for a decade now and I haven't won shit. You know, maybe he's just sick of being on the back end of the standings. Maybe he wants to go to a contender. You know, I mean, let's face it. This is his yeah, but if he If he wants to do that, he's going to have to take a pay cut. Yeah, I, 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 think, I think he's more dedicated to winning than making money. But I honestly, I, I, I look at their top six and it's not bad. No, it's not bad. No, I mean, it's not. Noah Larkin, Tyler Bertuzzi, and you got Lucas Raymond on that line. Who I think, I good. think Tyler Bertuzzi is a hack. He had three goals last year, though. And somebody has to score on bad teams. <laughs> uh, second look line, at, uh, look second at line they've, they've revamped their whole second line. They got Andrew Kopp in there now, who I'm not, I'm not sold of as him as being a, a true second line center. I'm not. I think either. of him as a very good third line center. Yes. He's that middle of the road where you could put right. him on either two. He'll look lackluster in one and solid in the other. So you got David Perron, though, on the right wing on that second line, which isn't bad. He's a, he's a very – he's a serviceable top six. I, th- I think David Perron, like he – I think his heart is into this. Um, this is his first time not signing with the Blues. Um, yeah, I know, right? <laughs> so he he very much wanted to go back, go to Detroit and, and probably play for Steve Eiserman and and – he definitely is uh like I said, he's he's a winner. He knows how to win. He's made he's made it to the cup what twice now, won it once. Yeah. Well, I mean he made it as a golden knight and then re signed with the blues. So right. he like he's he's a you know, I think a solid player, a solid top six left wing. Um I, I again I think their second line center, I think it I think they should really look at Players like um, Robbie Fabry and Oscar Sunkfist before they really think, make uh, a decision. But I think Fabry's hurt for. I think he's pretty much out for the entire season, isn't he? Is he really? Yeah, he got hurt again. Man, yeah. that sucks. Yeah, yeah, that makes it tough. But I'll tell you what, though, you know who they are getting back is Jacob Rana. Yes, and I think Jacob Rana is going to come into the season with a gigantic chip on his shoulder. Oh, because yeah. Because he wasn't very happy about getting traded out of the way all that went down, which for me, I don't know why he would have been upset because he wasn't used properly there. Yeah. He really wasn't. They wanted him to be more of a, a solid bottom six player. This guy is a top six player. Who did he come from again? Washington. Yes, that's right. One of the that's right. Okay. Yeah. Yes, I do. And yeah, I agree. I agree. I think he, he wasn't being used properly in Washington. I think he was very much a, uh, he, he was a top six talent for being forced into bottom six minutes. Um, and it's hard to compete when you have to compete with Ovechkin and Backstrom and all that. 
now he goes and goes to Detroit and he can actually show what he has to offer, you know? Right. And I think it's right. the tail end of his contract or like he didn't, he sign like a one or two year contract. Yeah. Yeah. So it like, is. he's really just playing this season out and going to try to get either as much money as he can or go to a contender. Yeah. To, you know? So we'll, we'll see. Um, I still think they're not going to make the playoffs this year. I think they're, like I said, a couple veteran key veteran players like i'm i'm talking you know a veteran that could still compete and play like i'm not mark stall wasn't gonna cut it bobby ryan wasn't gonna cut it but you know if they get a a couple serviceable veterans on that team i think they can be two years away from returning to the playoffs maybe five years away from making a push um but the changing of the guard in the East, I, I think we're five years away from the East being completely flip flopped. Yeah, yeah, you know? I, uh, I gotta, I gotta agree with that. Um, even though it's, it's going to be interesting to see if Simon Evanson makes the team that are whether highly prospect or highly touted defensive prospects uh, from Sweden, that's going to be interesting to see if he can make it. But I think you're right. I think, I think Detroit's going to make strides this year. I, I think, think they're going to be fighting. Forward. They're, they definitely are. They're they're gonna miss the wild card probably by one or two points. Um, as the preseason went along, and I saw a lot of things, I kind of changed my opinion on some some teams. You know, I think the Bruins do have a shot at a wild card spot. Um, just judging that, I, I, again, I don't think the Sabers are gonna make any strides this year. I do. I, I think they're gonna make tremendous strides. I realistically don't because I, I don't think, see their goaltending getting any better and their defense didn't get any better. I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that the Buffalo Sabres and the New Jersey Devils are gonna make the playoffs this year. That's a that's a very thin limb. You're gonna break the branch. Well, I'll tell you what, because I hate to I hate to tell you this. I, I don't think your Bruins are gonna make the playoffs this year. I, mean, I, they, I think they're, they're gonna make the, there's too many injuries to deal with. Um, Marshawn Marshawn is skating again. That's a big step forward. He is. Um, You're right. Yeah. And so is um, McAvoy. But so is still. McAvoy. So I, they may not be there for the first couple, maybe three, four weeks, but they'll they'll be back soon. In, in that Eastern Conference, if you dig yourself an early hole, look what happened to the Islanders last year. Yeah. They the Islanders were such a hole. unique – they were in such a unique predicament. Right. Well, and exactly. It really wasn't their fault. It's just they got themselves into such an early deep hole – they that couldn't bounce back. There's no way. Not in that conference. No, no way. Especially in the Atlantic Division. Yeah, there's just too much. Yeah. So uh, the yeah, there's too much. In the, I mean, that that's just I'm, ridiculous. I'm going to go on a big limb here, and that Toronto's going to take like four steps back. They're going to be in a wild. They're going to be a wild card team. You know who I think is also going to start taking steps back? It's going to be the Penguins and the Capitals, and it's for the same reason as the Bruins. They're age. starting to age out. Age. Crosby has one well in three years. years. There's nobody coming coming behind him. How do you replace Crosby and Ovechkin? Oh no, I'm I'm not I'm not even talking about Crosby and Ovechkin. I'm talking about the team in general. Oh yeah, no, they are they are an age. They are both an old old teams. Boston at least has youth in the pipeline with McLaughlin and obviously McAvoy and Pasternak are, are still pretty young, but they are there is no there is no one in the red and the uh, Capitals and the. No. And the Penguins pipeline. They got yeah. nothing. I mean, that's that's victim of so many years of success. Sure. Well, absolutely. That's what happens. You know, you, know, you, you trade away young talent to try to keep that Stanley Cup window open, and eventually it just catches up to you. Yeah, and then that window slams shut. But what I'm what I'm saying is I think with, with teams like that that are looking starting to look at a precipitous fall, it opens the door for teams like Buffalo, for teams like New Jersey, eventually Detroit. Again, I don't think no, I don't think. And don't forget Ottawa. Ottawa's loaded with Ottawa's. Young. Ottawa's the team that I'm scared of. Ottawa's the team that's going to make the. I don't think they got the goaltending. I think they got more better goaltending. Cam Talbot's out for two months. <laughs> I'd rather I'd rather have a pylon in that than Matt Murray. <laughs> well, he's in Toronto now. That <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm happy to see him there. <laughs> I'm so happy to see him in Toronto just to ruin that team. <laughs> But the so yeah, Toronto I think is taking two or three steps back. But they, uh, I think Boston will squeak in again. I think Boston squeaking into the playoffs. It's the, there's the the goaltending tandem I think is really really good there. Um, 
uh, Ottawa's going to – actually, I think Ottawa's going to come in second in the division. Or third. third wow. in the division. I think Ottawa's coming in third in the division. It's going to be Tampa. It's going to be Florida. Then it's going to be Ottawa. Then it's going to be Boston and uh, Toronto in the wild cards. You know what another intriguing team is the Columbus Blue Jackets? Very They're in the Metro. They're in the Metro. They're but, in the Metro. Um, but it's an intriguing team as far as like contending for a wild card. I think I don't think they're quite there yet. They're a year or two away. Because I think they're they're in the same goaltending problem. No, I don't think they have a big big goaltending problem. Rizikins is really good, and they still got Corpusalo. Yeah, but is that enough to take you to the promised land? I don't think it's enough to take you to the promised land, but it's enough to help you seem like you're contending for the promised land. Well, they, they got a stockpile of young talent. Now they got and they got Johnny Hockey and Patrick Line is happy. Yeah. He doesn't yeah. want out of there anymore. I know. Patrick Laine, when he's happy, I wish he stayed depressed because he is deadly when he's happy. <laughs> God. <laughs> he's so good when he's when he's comfortable. Yeah, right. Exactly. And when he was when when he really wanted out of Winnipeg, I mean he was he was scoring own goals. He was <laughs> he was playing he was playing Fortnite on his on, he was bringing his Xbox everywhere. He did not care about hockey, and now he starts caring again. God, right. he's gonna light the league up. He's gonna he's gonna get sixty four this year. Yeah, yeah, no doubt, no doubt. All right. Well, hey, listen, that was a lot of fun. It was. It really was. So next week when we do a best of the best, we should pick a Western Conference team so we can talk about our Western Conference. Preview. Los Angeles. You really want to do the Kings next week? I want to ruin you. I'm okay. going to make fun of everything. Drew Doughty's nowhere on my list. He's like the worst. Of course he's not. I didn't I didn't think he would be. No, Dustin Brown, the only good player in, in Kings history. And the only reason why is because he's from New York. <laughs> All right. Well, tune in next week and that ruins my hockey life. And, uh... <laughs> I'm gonna make Scott cry. <laughs> yeah, probably. But in the meantime, we do appreciate you listening. We uh we hope you either agree or disagree with our Detroit pick. <laughs> we'll let us know when we put this out on social media. And listen, you guys are so rude. You wouldn't even care. <laughs> we just suck it, around. Eric. That's a, yeah, Eric cool. <laughs> All right. Well, anyways, thank you for listening. We appreciate it. We hope you enjoyed, and we will see you next week on Marty's Illegal Stick, a hockey history podcast.